Hey everyone, <laughs> once again, seems that the federal liberals have begrudgingly decided this time to follow the rule of law. And I mean begrudgingly, right up till the last moment. And if you already paid attention to that John McCallum, the kind of folk bars, the kind of rhetoric he spells, basically giving China an excuse to intervene or push back against Canada following the rule of law and arrest this woman based on the fact that she's suspected of using her corporation as a backdoor means to spy on Western countries and Western allies. In regards to the unrolling of the 5G network, yeah, I've already said in past videos, I'm not a big fan of the Five Eyes spying on me and the kind of legislation that has given them carte blanche excuse to invade on my privacy. I'm definitely not willing to expand that out or allow the Chinese government to be able to do so as well. So I don't want anything to do with any of these 5G systems that are being implemented by an arm of the communist regime, this Huawei corporation. But as we know, Trudeau and seems like a few of other of his lackeys in the federal liberals seem to have a fondness for basic dictatorships such as that in communist China. Headline out of CBC News, British Columbia, updated. Canada announces extradition hearing against Meng Wazoo can go ahead. Green light from Ottawa means BC courts can proceed with formal hearing. March 1st, 2019. Canada has announced that an extradition hearing against Meng Wazoo, the embattled executive of Chinese tech giant Huawei, can move forward. Today, Department of Justice Canada officials issued an authority to proceed, formally commencing an extradition process in the case of Miss Meng Wazoo. Read a statement from the federal department. Ottawa had until midnight Friday, three months after Meng's arrest in Vancouver, to decide whether to approve the proceedings. Midnight Friday, and what's today? Friday, right? The last day. Now, they didn't wait till midnight. You know, they left a few hours, right? But still, the very last day is when the federal liberals decide to wait to do this. That speaks volumes on its own. The United States wants to try Meng on charges related to conspiring to violate international sanctions against Iran. Meng's defense team said in a statement that Meng maintains she is innocent of any wrongdoings and that the U.S. prosecution and extradition is an abuse of legal process. The team said it is disappointed that an authority to proceed was issued given the political nature of the charges and that U.S. President Donald Trump has repeatedly said he would interfere in the case if he thought it would assist with trade negotiations with China. The Chinese embassy in Canada also expressed its disappointment in the Department of Justice Canada's decision. This is not merely a judicial case but a political persecution against a high-tech enterprise, said the embassy in a statement. The final result of the Canadian court to handle this case will be a touchstone for testing whether Canada adheres to the judicial independence or not, it said. Vancouver immigration lawyer Richard Curlin said China has reasonable grounds to believe Canada could intervene in light of the recent SNC-Lavalin controversy. Canada has stood by its pretensions that we respect the rule of law, but got caught with their pants down with SNC-Lavalin, doing the opposite of what they told China they couldn't do, Curlin said. So yeah, so the Chinese that we're hearing, of course, the Trudeau liberals have screwed themselves on some, like I say, Canada, how, how could you support these people? I mean, if you're a decent, moral human being, there's no way that you can go out and support the federal liberals in October. Vote for them. I mean, and trust me, like I say, I understand historically you didn't have much of a choice, but you do have a choice today. You have the PPC, right? You don't have to go with the status quo. You don't have to constantly pick the lesser of evils. You can vote based on principle and for real change in this country in an attempt to try to end this kind of rampant corruption from all the established and entrenched political parties. And I definitely suggest you do so. But I mean, now we're seeing now they're using the excuse and, and they, you know what, now the Chinese, in addition to what McCollum said, right, he basically gave them some fodder to use against us and now this is more fodder for them to use against us. So Trudeau has, has screwed us on so many areas and so many aspects and so many regards and destroyed relationships with not just our closest ally to the South, but now even with a communist regime that can use retaliatory or revengeful measures as a means to harm the Canadian people once again economically. Because yeah, they can sue, you know, th this agreement, and it was written under the Harper regime. You know, now the Chinese government or this corporation can now sue the government. And you know, when, when some corporation sues the government, guess who pays? <laughs> the government doesn't pay. Trudeau's not gonna be paying. Morneau's not gonna be paying. None of these 
political hacks are going to be paying. No, you, the Cain taxer, or maybe your children or grandchildren, or the unborn at this point. Somebody's going to pay for all this stuff, but it's definitely not going to be the political ruling class or any of these bigwigs and these crony or corrupt organizations or corporations. Once again, it's always you and I, the average serf, the wage slave. We're the ones that's always on the hook to pay for it all. Like I say, if you want this to end, then you got to vote for the PPC in October. It's Canadian Libertarian, and I love liberty.